ओके ओके सो बिफोर वी प्रोसीड लेट मी टेक अ I mean, look back and uh, we'll quickly refresh all our volatile memories so that we know what we have gone through in the course of our. So, in the beginning, we uh, looked at a bunch of uh, circuits, uh, starting with the band gap reference, which was basically a circuit that can generate a constant reference voltage independent of temperature. and then we uh, went on and uh, saw very basic of uh, linear regulator and we saw ldo as an example and ldo is basically a simple current source that is pumping current into the load but of course we can't have a constant current so we have to vary this current and we'll vary this current by observing this output voltage and we'll compare it with some reference which will be from this band gap reference and instead of comparing the out we will compare fraction of v out and we'll generate that fraction using a resistor divider and we'll compare uh, the fraction of v out with the reference voltage and based on that We tune the current source, right? And then next we uh, looked at the buck converter, and this is simply the input getting multiplied by a square wave going from zero to one, and the output is filtered by an LC filter, right? and uh, following that we also looked at uh, switched rc filters and one of the motivations was to get a narrow bandpass filter and we started with this the same principle we multiply the input with a square wave going from 0 to 1 give it to a narrow low pass filter and we again modulate the output so this uh, multiplication is basically uh, two switches like this but then we saw this uh, switch that connects the resistor to ground we can actually get rid of it and then we can have a better circuit which looks like this right and uh, by the way what is the bandwidth for uh, this if this is r and this is c sorry It's one by R C, right? See here, if you think about it, this capacitor can discharge to the resistor throughout the clock cycle, so the bandwidth was one by R C. Whereas for uh, this case, if this switch is on for a duty cycle of D, it was uh, D by R C, right? That was one other motivation to go for this. We have a much narrow bandwidth. and of course uh, we also saw if you take the output directly at the capacitor this acts like a mixer and then we also looked at uh, chopping which basically is used to eliminate the effect of flicker noise or dc offset from baseband amplifiers and the idea is again multiply the incoming signal with a square wave going from minus 1 to 1 and do the same thing at the right and we uh, recognized all these are lptv networks so we kind of looked at some basics on them so one common observation was for any lptv network if you excite the network with the sinusoid at a frequency f you will have at the output you can see frequencies of the form f plus k times f s per fs is the frequency at which the network is varying periodically and of course uh, we saw the frequency uh, response is also time varying and it varies periodically so if basically take the fourier transform of this what do you get 
the harmonic transfer functions h k of j two pi f, and this basically says how uh, this frequency translation happens, right? And uh, yeah, I mean uh, one other thing: uh, if we have an ETH system, we know that the frequency response is some h of f, right? So if you feed in a complex exponential e power j two pi f t. What will be the output of the LTA system? It's this h of f times e power j two pi f t, and even if you give any arbitrary input, which has a Fourier transform v in of f, what will be the Fourier transform at the output? That is h of f times v in of f. Right? This is for LTA. But if you have an NPTV network, the uh, frequency response varies with time. Again, if you feed in a complex exponential, what do you get? The same uh, thing multiplied by this time-varying frequency response. But if you give an arbitrary input with a Fourier transform v n of f, what will be the output? Yeah, we saw you use the array expansion and right. I mean, it might be tempting to say this is basically h of f comma t times v n of f, but that is not the case, right? You use your array expansion and you will find this is basically uh, summation k h k of f minus k f s times v n of f minus k f s. Okay, so please bear that in mind. Right. So we also looked at. Uh, I mean, we saw that for an LPTV network, we also have frequency conversions from frequencies f plus k f s to f, and uh, we saw one technique to uh, reduce the number of such frequency translations, and uh, that was basically the NPAR principle. But simply speaking, what we are attempting is. Uh, we are making, we are trying to uh, make the apparent frequency at which the overall network is varying is not f s, it is n times f s. That's the basic idea, and you can achieve that by taking multiple copies of the same LPTV network. Just that the time variance in each network is shifted equally, and then you sum up all the outputs. Right. And as an example, uh, we looked at multi-phase buck converter. And if you remember a normal buck converter, what was one of the issues with that? Sorry, the output ripples. And that is again because of the fact that although your input is DC, you have frequencies of the form uh, zero, FS, two FS, and so on. And if you use this multi-phase operation, you can reduce the number of those frequency translations. And uh, we saw if you choose the duty cycle to be one by n, you can completely eliminate the ripples in principle. And we also saw how we can uh, get a better bandpass filter by doing this n-path operation, and that gave rise to this n-path filter. And here again, if you choose a special case where the duty cycle is chosen to be one by n, the circuit greatly simplifies, and uh, finally we end up with this simple looking circuit, where you just have a resistor connected to a series of branches having a switch and a capacitor, right? And we also uh, try to analyze this n-path filter to some detail. Right, and I mean, if you think about it, for all the circuits, the way we analyzed, there was nothing new in it. Right, it was the same circuit theory that you had learned in your basic classes. There was nothing special tricks that we applied to solve them. It was just a normal circuit uh, theory that you learned. The only place where this LPTV uh, principles help you is to understand how the circuit evolves about it. Right, I mean, I can directly take the circuit and say. Analyze and show that this acts like a bandpass filter, but knowing the fact that this is an LPTV network and understanding the underlying principles, 
actually help you build the circuit from scratch right and i mean same with your assignments and exam right there was nothing special anyone i mean without knowing this course you could actually have solved it technically speaking right the only jargon you had to be aware of was this harmonic transfer function hk of f if you know what this means you could actually have solved it right and i mean uh, before the break uh, we saw this idea of conversion matrices that the uh, underlying principle is straight forward for an lti network or an lti circuit we can write the current to be a conductance times voltage and all of these quantities are scalar quantities but uh, for an lptv network you can write it like this where you consider everything as vectors vectors or matrices and this is because uh, for an lptv network again excitation at f will result in frequencies of the form f plus k f s so include all of these frequency components and also capture the effect of frequency translation and the moment you do any uh, time varying impedance or admittance can be replaced by its conductance or admittance or whatever matrix you want and then again you can use the same uh, kcl kvl that you know and solve right great so yeah before we move today let me actually discuss the uh, fifth question in the second assignment so the uh, circuit was this you had an rc filter like this and you connected a chopper right and basically you are asked to find h0 of 0 if i take the output here and across the capacitor cell right i mean basically what this is mean we need to apply a 1 volt dc and just find what is the average voltage across each of the capacitors that's all right so let's uh, let me just draw the circuits so let's say in one phase cell call 51 the switches simply uh, connect straightly so we have the resistor capacitor and the top plate of c1 is connected to the top plate of c2 and the bottom plate is connected to the bottom plate of c2 so actually let me show the bottom plate sub curved surface for more clarity so this is your effective circuit right c1 c2 and say in the second phase there is no change in r and c1 but what happens the top plate of c2 is connected to the bottom plate of c1 and bottom plate of c2 is connected to the top plate of c1 so if you have to draw like this the top plate is connected like this that's to the ground so i'll just say it's connected to the ground and this one goes like this right i mean again this i'll again redraw it as and see in here that like this right the bottom plate is connected to the top plate okay so let me probably erase this and then so this is your circuit and maybe you from this portion okay in what dc and what dc Right, and uh, most of you had uh, decided that the capacitor voltage settles to a steady state value, and you had computed what that is. But let's actually see what happens, right? So again, to start, we'll assume the capacitors are uh, discharged. So let's say we start with the phase phi one. So the capacitor starts with zero, and they attempt to charge to one volt. So let's say it does something like this. So let's say it reaches to some voltage P1. 
so now what happens at this point phi2 starts so at this instant the circuit changes from uh, from the left one to the right so basically the capacitor c2 is now flipped and connected across c1 right so uh, because of that instantaneously there is going to be some charge transfer and distribution among the capacitor right so the capacitor voltage will change abruptly okay and uh, of course since the current i mean at this instant since only capacitors are uh, transferring the charges no current actually flows through the resistor r and you can find let's say at this instant the capacitor voltage is going to change instantly to some value say that is some vx you can find it using uh, charge conservation again i usually say uh, think of charge conservation as applying kcl just say the total charge flowing out of these nodes is zero so i'll call it delta q1 write it in a different color to zero now delta q1 is basically the capacitance times the change in the voltage so here now the voltage is vx across the capacitor like this earlier let us say at the end of phase phi1 it got charged to some value v1 so this is what vx minus v1 right plus uh, delta q2 is the charge uh, uh, differential charge that flows to q uh, into the capacitor c2 that is c2 times the change in the voltage so now the voltage is vx earlier we have to look at the capacitor voltage in this polarity that is minus v1 right so this is basically plus v1 from this you will find uh, what is vx vx is uh, v1 times i think yeah c1 minus c2 by c1 plus c2 right so the voltage increases or decreases here it drops right i mean it makes sense because you are connecting the capacitors with opposite polarity and you see if the capacitors are equal you need it exactly goes to zero right so it basically drops to some value so if uh, this voltage was v1 this is basically some some alpha v1 where i call this as some alpha so now what happens we have the phase phi2 both the capacitors start from this initial voltage of alpha v1 and they try to charge to the dc of 1 volt so let's say it does something like this and say phi2 ends here okay so now what happens the circuit again flips to uh, this one so basically the same thing is happening right so let us say this voltage is now v2 at this instant the voltage is going to drop because the same thing is happening the capacitor which were connected like this for c2 the connection is flipped right so if i call uh, this voltage as v2 instantaneously it's going to drop to some value and what will that value be it will be alpha v2 the same thing right i mean there is basically no difference between these two you do the same charge conservation you will have the same set of equations just that this will be v2 and this will be some value vy and you will find that this will drop to alpha v2 so it will keep continuing and in steady state it will attain some it will uh, behave something like this okay? i mean this will have to reach steady state because it cannot blow up to infinity i think that is at least apparent so the steady state voltage is uh, going to look like this so let us say this is some va so this is going to be alpha va that's all right and what is this time period ts by 2 right because if you think about it again the circuit topology changes periodically after every half cycle so i mean this is this should not be surprising because again this is an lptv network apply a dc input you should expect frequencies of the form f plus kfs okay 
Great. So uh, now the steady state is going to look like this. Right? I know this is VA and alpha VA. So how will you find VA? I know alpha. How will you find VA? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you assume that this is some p equal to zero. Time is something that you define. So this is p s by two, and uh, this is basically a first order RC circuit charging from an initial value alpha V A and trying to charge to one volt, and you are looking at that capacitor voltage at p s by two. That's all. So if I call this as some V C one or say this is V O one, V O one of t. What will be the relation if I call uh, this instant as t equal to zero? What is v final? One volt. One volt. Okay. Okay. I mean, see how does it happen? If you don't have initial condition, you know that it starts from uh, zero. If there is zero initial condition, it's going to start from zero and reach to one volt. And what is the Equation for this rising exponential. That's all, right? One minus p by tau. On top of it, you also have now the capacitor discharging. What is that? That's all. Alpha v a. Okay, that's all. Okay. And uh, this, when you take the value at t s by two, that is going to be v a, right? So you can put t s by two and find v a. And once you know, just take the average of this, right? Okay. Now the second part, I think uh, most of you got it. So second part is finding the voltage here, and this is straightforward. In one phase, this capacitor is connected directly to C1. So if I call this as VO2, VO2 will be VO1 in one half period. In the other phase, you are connecting it like this, and it is reversed. It is minus V O two, sorry, minus V O, right? So if I try to sketch uh, this fellow, I do that quickly. So in one phase it might uh, follow, and let me uh, this is basically this is zero volts. In one phase it's going to follow. In the other phase it's going to get inverted. So instead of dropping to this alpha V A, it will go to minus alpha V A. It will come something like this, and then this will be flipped, right? And then it will again start to follow. This. So basically, the average is zero. Right? I mean, okay. As an exercise, you can try this, right? Assume that uh, the input time applying is a periodic square wave going from minus one volt to one. Of course, this is T S by two, and try to find what is the average of this, right? Good. Great. Spend some time on this. Great. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, this next half of the course we'll try to understand uh, noise. And uh, for noise, we were interested in finding two quantities. One was the power spectral density, and the other was the Mean square noise, and uh, we decided to find some efficient way to compute these two. So, and uh, last question: so That's the representation of an actual current. Yeah, so yeah. Basically, this is uh, this is basically the input capacitance of the so amplifier. Yeah. So, then, but we can't take the output from that signal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, I mean. Uh, In some cases it is fine, but in some very high precision cases, this sudden jump in this voltage is an issue. This C2 represents the input capacitance of the amplifier. So, what's the uh, take away from this for the real life? Okay. So, it, it, you just this one way you can understand that uh, there will be glitches across C2, and the glitches will be periodic at two times f s. I mean that is one takeaway, and if you want to understand, and with this you can try to analyze what this jumps in uh, C two will result. Okay. 
I can share some resources later, but uh, great. So yeah, so as I was talking, we'll try to understand these behavior of noise. Again, we'll start with an LTA system and uh, extrapolate to LPTV. And actually, before that, uh, to understand how to efficiently compute power spectral density and mean square noise, uh, let me explain some circuit theorems. So the first one is the elegance theorem. Okay. So let's say you take any electrical network. So I'll just not go. For, I mean, I'll not explain the proof. I'll just take an example and show you. So you take any electrical network. So you take some random network like this. So if you are, uh, if you are, if you have to find the DC steady state, like x zero zero, DC excitation, DC output. So if it is a uh, uh, chaining network, then like uh, in, if, like in this case, it is simple RC circuit. You know that the DC current from uh, across any in, in, in any capacitor should be zero in the uh, DC steady state. Right. Right. Now. Uh, can we use that to directly uh, uh, I say that? I don't think you can use it directly because the network is changing here. So that is what my question is. Yeah. That uh, can we simply short in that case? The like it is crisscrossing. Like one right. one one time it is directly connected, another time it is crisscrossing. Mm -hmm. So we, can we, for the purpose of finding the DC station, can we simply uh, use only one part of that connection and then say that? Uh, it should settle to one volt or something like that. If you give enough time, it will settle to one volt. But here it is not happening, right? So here I don't think you can use that because yeah, so the average value. Why should it not settle to one volt? Uh, from the logic that the, the, the DC current in the capacitor should be equal to yeah. Zero. DC current is. Uh, I mean, basically the input to this capacitor. Uh -huh. It not only sees a DC, right? If you think about it, you are flipping it, uh -huh. so the voltage also instantly changes. I mean, it's not like uh, this is compatible. Your argument is true if all the voltages in the network are DC, then the currents are only DC currents. Yeah. But here, you uh, this voltage does not only contain DC. You but think about it. For that voltage V1, um, this one, yeah. For that voltage V1, I mean, uh, uh, for, and for that we also C1. There the DC current should be zero, right? DC, hey, but the thing is, you also have the impulse currents that goes when we have this. At the instance of these, right? Charge transfer happens instantaneously, so we'll have impulse currents going in. So we'll have to take into account all of them actually. If PLC is much greater than the current flow of this R circuit to C and zero, then there will be no currents between the capacitors. Uh, no, no, what will happen is, I mean, if basically if TS is large, the voltage will look like this. You will still have the jump. Uh, in steady state, yes. But this is not, it does not reach steady state yet, right? If you think about it, steady state means it is not like the voltage is constant. Uh, it's a periodic steady state. That's what my question was that if it is a periodic steady state, then uh, even the periodic steady state, the DC value of current. Yeah, you can use the DC value of the current equal to zero, that is true. Uh -huh. But uh, that you think, I mean, you, you can't directly apply. Please think about it. We'll discuss it at the end of the class. Huh? So, uh, this is usually uh, time constraint will be much lower than the. Uh, yeah, that is the case I have found, right? So, uh, in that case, the uh, VO1 is uh, x0 uh, 0 and VO1 will be 1 over No, need not be, right? I mean, yeah, but you will have the small jump here. If you neglect it, yes, it will be 1. Yeah. VO2 will be 1 and minus 1. That will be 0, yeah, correct. I mean, that's why I explicitly told don't assume anything about the time constant. It is, anyone will have decides for the whole time. Okay, so we'll probably discuss it later, but yeah, for now let's uh, look at this random network that I've drawn. So let's see. 
Okay, so this is some network and the elements that are used can be linear, non-linear, time invariant, varying, anything you want, right? As long as it is a lump electrical network, that KC length behavior is valid, you can use this theorem. And uh, so let us say uh, in this network, I take one particular branch, there are let us say multiple branches, I take a K branch. Let us say the uh, kth branch voltage is the k. The by branch voltage, I mean let us say this is the kth branch. The branch voltage is this. Okay. It is a uh, difference between these two node voltages. And let us say the current flowing like this in the kth branch is ik. <laughs> so if I take the product dk times ik, what do we get? Power. Yeah, power dissipated or delivered? Dissipated. Right? I mean, this is the convention we use plus and minus current going into the plus. So, this is the power dissipated in that particular branch. Okay? So, now if I take a summation of this over all the branches in the network, what will this be? Zero. This is basically telecom zero. I mean, you might have uh, seen this using examples in your basic circuit theory, but this is one simplified form of telegraph theorem. Okay, but uh, what we will get some interesting results if you extend it slightly. And uh, for that, let me take another network. I mean, elements used here are completely different from the elements used in this network. That's why I drew it using some weird symbol. Okay, so basically, I mean, what I'm saying is this can be a resistor, whereas this can be an inductor, diode, anything. Okay, so the elements, uh, there is no relation between the elements in these two networks. But looking at it, is there some relation between the two networks I have drawn? Sorry? Yeah, basically, uh, technically speaking, they have the same graph. In plain English, it means you have the same number of nodes, same number of branches, and identical connection among the nodes, right? So, they have the same graph. So, again, in the k branch, if the voltage is pk hat and the current is ik hat, and if I take this, this again 0, no brainer. Okay, so, let me extend it. So, let us say uh, the current here is I1, this I2. See the corresponding currents here are uh, I1 hat, I2 hat, ok. So now if I apply KCL at uh, this left mode, uh, leftmost node, assuming this has the reference node, what is the equation you have? So I1 plus I2 plus I3 0. If I do it at the uh, middle node here, what do I get? Minus I2 plus I4 plus I3 0. Here, what do you get? You have minus I3 minus I5 plus I6 0. So, I mean, I can write KCL again for this network. So, just the hat. Okay. Right? Great. So, let me actually copy this. So, now, uh, say, where is this? 
Okay, so now let's say uh, in the first network, at each of these nodes, I inject a zero amp current. What do you think will happen to the branch voltages? No change. So the branch voltages is still VK, and the current flowing through each of these branches is IK. Fine. So now uh, I know that. I1 hat plus I2 hat plus I3 hat is 0. So instead of applying a 0 on current, I will apply this. Okay. Similarly, uh, at this node, instead of a 0 ampere current source, I will apply a current like this and so on. And remember, these are the currents in another network having the same graph. Right? The, the net, I mean, there need not be any relation between I1 and I1 hat. Okay, so if I do that, so what will happen? So here I will add a current I1 hat. So here I will add a current I2 hat. Okay, so at this node I have added I1 hat, I2 hat plus I3 hat. That is zero. Fine. At the second node, I have to add minus I2 plus I4 plus I5. So minus I2 is already here. I will just add plus I4 hat and plus I5 hat. In the last node, I need minus I3 minus I5 plus I6. I already have minus I3 minus I5. So this is I6. Okay. So in essence, I still have added a zero net current to each of the nodes. So what do you think will happen to the branch voltage? No change. And even the current flowing in each of these elements is going to be same IK. Fine? Great. So now, if you uh, think about it, let's say I take uh, I know, this branch. I mean this portion. So I have some element with a voltage VK like this, current psi K. In parallel, I just have another current source, the value IK had. So I can replace this entire parallel combination by say another element. What will be the voltage? Okay, no change in the voltage and what will be the current? So current is basically this current, right? I am replacing this entire portion by this. So what is the current that enters here and leaves here? Ik plus Ik hat. So this. So the current is right here, IK plus IK hat. So what I can do, I mean each of these, each of this uh, portion, I will replace it by this new element, where the current flowing through that element is IK plus IK hat, right. <laughs> so now I will get a new network. things. Okay, so where the voltages are still same, VK, current is IK plus IK hat. So the product of this gives the power dissipated in this composite branch and if I take the summation over all these branches, that will still be zero, right. So now if I expand it, what do I get? I have summation VK, IK plus VK IK hat 0. I know already that this guy is 0. Right? This was the total power dissipated in our original network here. 
right you know this is already zero so what do we get summation vk ik had to zero so what does this mean i have two networks just having the same graph that's all i take the voltage uh, branch voltage in the first network multiply it with the corresponding branch current in the other network and i do it for all the branches that is still zero okay so uh, an extension of telecom theorem is that we have vk ik hat to be zero so what can we say about now uh, vk hat ik that will not be again zero right if i start i mean now i here i started with this network and added zero on current sources and i got this if i started with the other network i'll get this so this is also zero and of course we know that even vk ik is zero right? i mean of course the last two looks at least uh, fine and the first two we can see from this that uh, can take any branch voltage multiply it with the corresponding branch current in another network and the summation will still be zero okay and uh, not just that can even go one step higher here i assume that the voltages and currents are constant right i just told v1 i1 but of course we will have time varying voltages and time varying currents so let us say i take a snapshot of uh, the voltages and currents in the first network at a time t1 and i take a snapshot of the voltages and currents in the second network at another time t2 kcr and kdl will still be valid at any time instant so here what i'll have i'll enter for this l r i1 of t so i t1 zero whereas here i'll have i1 hat of t2 i2 hat of t2 zero you will have for everything so if you do this what you get so here i'll have i1 of t1 this will be i1 hat of t2 and it's i mean it's easy to see that what you get finally if you do this basically I, the quantities in the first network are observed at a time t1 the second network i am observing at another time t2 so this will become ik of t1 ik hat of t2 okay and this is again equal to ik hat of t2 i k of t1 this is again v k of t1 i k of t1 v k hat of t2 okay again this last two should be easy to see but the first two might be puzzling at first at least from uh, this example that i have taken it seems find that this is okay right is that fine so the bottom line is you can take any network need not be uh, linear non linear it can be anything just we just need to make sure that these two networks are the same graph if you do that you take the branch voltage of one network at any time instant multiply with the branch current corresponding branch current in the other network at some other time instant and you do it for all the branches it will be zero right? and the only uh, validity here i mean what is the only thing that we have used here when this case here the only thing that we used in derive i mean uh, arriving at this result is this right correct mm -hmm. so can that is the same network can do Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can do. 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 Yeah,
summation will be zero it will still be zero because here we didn't assume anything the only thing here was if you remember we started by saying we'll have a zero amp current source and instead of that zero amp current source we applied this and this is true because kcl is true so for any lumped electrical network where kcl and kvl are valid this is true okay cool of course uh, uh, this circuit theorem is cool but you might not i mean what's the point of learning circuit theorems you, i mean you learn many circuit theorems right the ten minutes huh yeah i mean see you can solve any network just by knowing kcl kvl right but like i mentioned if you the point of knowing the circuit theorems is at least it will help you simplify your calculations right but i mean uh, this result looks cool but you might not be able to use it in practice to simplify your calculations but it turns out it is actually quite useful in uh, proving other circuit theorems which are indeed uh, powerful or at least historically that's how it was derived some of these other theorems and uh, one such theorem which you can prove using telegram's theorem is reciprocity and uh, reciprocity is valid only for linear networks as we will see and say we take a linear network and i'll assume it consists only of resistors to start with no so only linear we'll see after that. first we'll assume that it's a linear network containing only resistors Okay, so I'll number this as one two, although I can number as one million, two million. So uh, here, see, I inject the current I one and try to measure voltage V two hat. I'll take the same network. This is four point four two. Here, I will apply current like you had, and measure the voltage. It's V1. Okay. So here again, it's the same network. I can apply Telegram's theorem, right? So uh, you know from Telegram's theorem, summation k, V k I k hat, same as summation k. Ek hat take it zero. So I'll just use the first part of the result. Okay, and we'll uh, do this to this to these two networks and see what happens. Okay. And please remember, uh, for the first network, that is the network on the left, the branch voltages are Ek, Ik, and I'm assuming that here the voltages are Ek hat and Ik. Okay. So let's uh, apply Telegram's theorem. So what I have to do is I have to take the voltage in this network, multiply with the corresponding branch. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Thanks. Okay, that's the convention I've used. The voltages here are unhatted quantities, V K I K, and here the voltages and currents. I will tell. I mean, just a convention, right? I mean, just some notation. Cool. So now let's start doing the Telegram theorem, and we have to uh, do this product for all the branches. So we'll have to do for all the internal branches in the network. So let's say this is for all the internal branches. Plus, I'll have a branch here. And then I'll have a branch here, right? These are the two additional branches. So let's do it. So the voltage here, say it is V1 times. I have to look at the corresponding branch current in this network. So the current flowing here, what is it? Zero. Good. So this is it. And the last portion is the voltage here. Which is V two times the current 
Yeah, please remember the, the convention we follow is yeah. So if this is the voltage, this is the current. Okay. So we need to look at the current in this polarity. So which is minus I2. I2 hat. That's fine. So similarly for uh, I can do for this also. So again I'll assume that we have done VK hat IK for all the internal branches. Plus the voltage here which is V1 hat times the current in uh, which direction? Right to left or left to right? I mean I need to take the current. No, no, please uh, look at it. The convention is if this is the voltage, the current should enter the positive thing. So the current is in this direction. Is that fine? I mean that's a convention we have consistently followed, so we need to stick to it. So the current in this direction is what is it? Minus I1 plus of course the voltage here I will say it is some uh, V2 hat times here the current is 0. Fine? Okay. So now let's look at the internal branches. So what I have assumed is the uh, network consists only of linear resistors. So you take any branch, it basically is an equivalent resistance. Okay. So if that is the case, uh, in this network, I know that the branch voltage is VK and the branch current is IK. And I know for a fact that this network contains only resistors. So each branch I can think of it as an equivalent resistance. So then what will be the relation between these two? It is some uh, IK times RK, some resistance in the K branch. So similarly here, it is the same network, just the voltage is different. So VK hat is, IK hat times RK, right? The same network, we have the same resistance, the voltage is different, so the current changes, okay? Fine. Cool. So now I'll uh, instead of VK, I'll plug in this here. So what I'll have, I'll have first term is zero. Second term is I'll have IK, IK hat RK <coughs> minus V2 I2 hat. These two terms is equal to minus V1 hat I1. Plus IK K hat RK. Is that fine? The only change I have done is instead of the branch voltages, I have replaced the branch voltage in terms of the branch current. Right? And since this is a network containing resistors, I can write the branch voltage to be branch current times some constant or some quantity. Cool. So what happens now? These two go. So I'll now have E2 by I1 equal to I mean basically these two terms are equal, right? So E2 by I1 is what? Huh? V1 hat by I2 hat. Okay. So what this says, if you have a network like this containing only linear resistors, if I apply a 1 amp current and measure the voltage here, that will be same as the voltage I measure here and I apply a 1 amp current. Is that fine? And uh, please remember the only thing that lets us do it, what does it, I mean, uh, can I do it for any network or what is the assumption we have made here? What lets us do it? Yeah, the, the important thing is we should be able to write it like this. Any branch voltage, I should be able to write it in terms of the branch current times something. As long as I can do this for all the branches in the network, this is valid. Right? Because. Uh, yeah, well, let's come to it slowly, right? Let's start with resistors. 
Okay, because Telegram CRM is valid for anything, any network. But if you want to apply reciprocity, this has to be satisfied. Okay, and uh, yeah, I mean one way to remember how reciprocity can be applied is see here in this network, if the excitation is made zero, what happens to the port one? It behaves like an open circuit. What do you have here? Open circuit. Similarly, here if I make the excitation zero, this is open, and you also have the open. Circuit. Okay. And of course, here we have considered uh, current excitation and the voltage response. I can do all combinations. So let's just do that quickly and then the plus. So say I take the same network. So now I apply a voltage input and I try to measure the voltage output. So this is the network. So here I'll have to apply the excitation here. That is at least fine. But should it be a current excitation or a voltage excitation? I mean, we just saw right uh, for reciprocity to be uh, fine. If you, uh, yeah, if you null the excitation sources, the behavior of the ports should be identical. Okay. So here I'll have to apply an excitation, which when is made zero, should act like an open circuit. Should be a current. Okay. So this should be a current. Exactly. Thank you. This is I two hat. So what should I do here? Again, you can take him from here. If I null this, it becomes a short. So basically, this has to be a short, and I'll measure the current. Right? And we can quickly verify by doing the Telegram theorem again. So uh, let's do it for the first branch. V one times the current. Current should be. Uh, in this direction, that is, I will add plus summation. I will have the same thing. Uh, v k times I k hat plus the voltage here V two times the current that is flowing in this direction minus I two hat. And this is equal to. I'll do the same thing. I have to look at the voltage here, zero. So this term simply goes to zero. Plus here I have VK hat IK. Plus the voltage here, which is say some V two hat times the current in this network, zero. Right. And of course I know uh, this term is uh, IK RK. This is IK hat RK. So these two basically cancel. Fine. So what do you end up with? You have V1 I1 hat. This. Fine. So if I take V2 by V1, that will be same as V1 by V2. Okay. And of course, one way to remember the direction of the currents is see uh, here. You can think as if we change this to excitation is applied here, and you measure the response in this direction. That is voltage. You take this as positive and this as negative, or if it's a current, you take it in this direction. Here you apply the excitation here. Response is measured here. Okay. So for the previous case. The voltage was measured with this as the positive, this as the negative. Here also the same thing. This was positive, this was negative. Okay. So it basically reverses, right? I apply here, measure here. I apply here, I measure here. Right. So of course uh, now if I have a current input and measure the current in the other network, I have to apply a voltage and measure the voltage, right? I mean, these are basically 
ด้วยพริกเดี๋ยวไป I can even do the same. I can start that. I can say this is my original network. This is the other network. I'll get the same thing. So we have then covered three cases. Uh, what is the final case? We applied voltage input. I mean, first was current input, voltage output. We saw voltage input, voltage output, and that was also see, that gives the result for current input, current output. What is the last thing? Voltage input, current output. So again, what should be the direction of the current now? I mean, for measuring, in which direction should I measure? I should measure from like this. Okay, this should be my direction. If this is V1, this is I2. So here, what should be the excitation and what should be the measuring quantity? I need to apply something which, when made zero, must look like a short circuit. Okay, it's a voltage source. So this is uh, say V2 hat, and uh, here I should measure something, and that should be similar to what happens when I short this source. So I should measure a current, and what should be the direction? The direction, as we saw, is this. Okay. So this should be the direction of the current, and I mean uh, I'll give this as an exercise. You can do Telegram theorem and actually prove that I2 by V1 is same as I1 hat by V2. Okay. So just to summarize, we have if we have a network which contains only linear resistors. If I apply a current in this direction and measure the voltage here, the same response can be obtained by applying a current here in this direction and measuring the voltage here. Fine. Now, see if the excitation is a voltage, and I measure the voltage in this direction. This response you can get. By injecting a current at the second port and measuring a current from top to bottom. So now let us say I am interested in applying a current and measuring a current in this direction. What should I apply here? Voltage source should be applied here, and I should measure the voltage. Yeah. Get something. Yeah. I should measure the voltage in this direction. And the last combination is I apply a voltage in this direction. I'll measure the current like this. I can get the same response by applying a voltage here and measuring the current. Okay, and please remember the the response measured is in this polarity. Okay, and uh, this is I mean you can apply reciprocity only if you can write the branch voltage to be the corresponding branch current times something. Okay, only if you can write it for every branch, you can apply this reciprocity. So uh, before we finish, again this looks like a cool result, but uh, let's see if this is actually useful at all, right? Sir, huh? This result will not be valid. We can apply Telegram theorem. See this this result relies on the fact that you can cancel these quantities. The V K I K hat and V K hat I K for the internal branches in these two networks, only if they are equal, this term cancels, and that is possible only if you have the same network, and if you can write the branch voltage as branch current times something. That's fine. 
Okay, otherwise, I mean, you can still write Telegram theorem. This result will not be one. I mean, you will have some other equation which may or may not be used. So as I was talking, uh, let's see where this reciprocity might be useful. And if you recollect from the last class, see if you have a network consisting a lot of resistors. So for now, we'll assume only resistors. If you are, let's say, interested in finding the noise bar spectral density. What you will do, you will first replace each of these noisy resistors by a noiseless resistor in series with uh, voltage noise and then you have to find, I mean the output pass spectral density is each SB1 of F times H1 of F plus you have to do for everything. So which means you need to find uh, this H of F from each of these source to the output and to find that basically you will have to activate only one, null all of them, find it, repeat it for every source. And if there are thousand resistors, you have to do thousand such experiments and measure it. But now we have learnt a new result which is reciprocity, right. I know that if I am interested in applying a voltage and measuring a voltage, I can as well do it by nulling the sources here, I will apply a current and measure the currents, right. I mean basically I know that let's say this is not there for now, okay, only this source is active. I apply a voltage here and measure the response here. The same response I can get by applying a current here and up measuring what is the current. And in this case, you have a polarity. Yeah, polarity doesn't matter because we are doing mod square. So that's okay. I mean, as of now, we have seen only for resistors. Next class, we will see that we can also do it for capacitors and inductors. For any LDI, we can actually do it. Okay. But this looks uh, good, right? Because now we don't have to take each individual source, apply, excite it and find the response. I will just apply one current and since one experiment I will measure all these currents and that directly gives me all of these H1 of F, H2 of F and so on. And this is how actually circuit simulators also calculate noise actually because else it becomes almost impossible. We will stop here and in next class we will see how we can extend it for capacitors and other LTA elements.